e magis tuarsa tanasha. Taparswa guarba de asta. Hello everyone, I'm Eurogamers Ian Higton and this is Far Cry Primal, a game where you can stroke bears on the face and set fire to mammoths with flaming arrows. I played an hour's worth of the game at a press event recently, so what follows is a load of gameplay I captured while I was there, along with my first impressions. Nee, nee. First up, I should say that I was pretty worried about Far Cry Primal when it was announced early last month, what with it being set during a time period where there's no guns, no vehicles, and potentially no crazy charismatic villains. When I first watched the reveal trailer for Primal, I was terrified that the terrible Shangri-La missions from Far Cry 4 had been turned into a full game. But while it does lift some elements from that, specifically the animal companion and the bow and arrow combat, the open world sandbox is busy enough to make it feel like your traditional Far Cry game. Or at least Far Cry's 3 and 4, whose cookie cutter template is blatantly apparent in Primal. Now, we all knew that Far Cry Primal was set in prehistoric times, but what was revealed at the event was the fact that your character Taka has the power to tame and then command wild animals. This is a pretty unique twist that thankfully adds a load of depth to what is slowly becoming a rather familiar formula. In the demo, there were 17 different beasts for Takar to tame and use as companions, including saber-toothed tigers, cave lions, and even badgers. Takar also has a pet owl that can be summoned anytime you want with a single press of the D-pad. Unlike the rest of the beasts, you're given direct control over the owl and you can use it to scout out outposts and mark enemies before you begin your assaults. You can even use it to select a target for your current companion beast to attack. Basically, it's a prehistoric version of AJ Gale's camera, but one that can fly and that has a deadly swoop attack that'll tear the face off an unsuspecting Neanderthal. Every other beast is controlled by pointing, point at a location and the beast will go there. Point at an enemy or a wild animal and the beast will attack it. Each one also has a unique ability. The wolves, for instance, will point and growl in the direction of enemies. Sabertooths will bring dead bodies back to you so you can loot them. The panther is great for stealth assaults and the tank-like bear will dig for honeycombs which can be used for crafting recipes. Taming beasts and swapping between them is incredibly simple. Any beast you have already tamed will be available to call in an instant from your beasts menu. One quick whistle and they'll be by your side in no time. To tame a wild beast, you just have to lob a chunk of meat at their feet and hope they start eating that rather than your face. If they do, you'll be given a simple button prompt and then bingo, the beast is yours to command. It's obvious that these beasts are the main focus of Primal though, and the fact that you can pet them shows that Ubisoft really wants you to build a bond with your furry friend. I actually grew really attached to the bear and chose him above all the other beasts as my main companion. He's so awesome with his big fluffy bear head, and I mean, just look at that swimming animation! Oh my god, he's amazing! Your beasts aren't invincible though, they can get injured and if they take too much damage they'll get knocked into a downed but not out state. When that happens you'll have a limited amount of time to revive them by feeding them some meat which will restore their health. Take too long though and your beast will die, although it can be summoned back to the land of the living with special items. For instance I had to find two red leaves before I could bring my bear back from bear heaven. Wake up! 
Weapons wise, I was able to play around with the club, spears and the bow and arrows. All the weapons were perishable, but each one was easily constructed on the fly using items found dotted around the game world. There is a large emphasis on crafting in Primal, but it's all very arcadified and easy to do rather than being some kind of hardcore survival sim. Wooden weapons like the clubs and the arrows can also be set on fire so you can use them to burn down enemy outposts or set fire to yaks and mammoths. Not sure why you'd want to do that but to be honest it is a good laugh. <laughs> Now one of the things I'm not allowed to show you in this gameplay is the map screen, but I can confirm that the world of Primal is pretty large. It seems slightly smaller than Far Cry 4 I'd say, but still big enough to have different biomes like the tall snowy mountains and the wooded areas and the lakes lower down. Traversing this world on foot is going to be a lot more time consuming than bombing around Karat on a quad bike, but Ubisoft has crammed it full of wildlife and enemies and other emergent diversions that serve to keep things interesting. Later on in the game there's also the promise of being able to tame and ride mammoths and although I didn't see it in action I was told that you could ride a saber toothed tiger which is basically the coolest thing ever. I mean that's pretty much like a video game version of He-Man riding Battle Cat isn't it? I guess? Maybe? Finally, a Ubisoft employee also confirmed to me that Far Cry Primal will not include any kind of multiplayer, so no co-op and definitely no level editor, which is sure to be a massive blow to Far Cry's small but dedicated map making community. According to Ubisoft, they left it out so they could concentrate on making Takar's story as good as possible, but I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to cut these aspects after they were widely ignored by players in Far Cry 4. Overall, my first impressions of Primal were very positive, especially seeing as I went in with some hefty concerns. The whole Beastmaster thing works really well and seasoned Far Cry fans will have no trouble grasping the concept, as the rest of the gameplay is so familiar. While the series is in danger of becoming another yearly rinse and repeat fest like Assassin's Creed, the fact that Primal has taken such a bold gameplay choice should really be applauded. It keeps the series feeling fresh even though the core liberating outposts gameplay is beginning to seem a little bit prehistoric. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe for more Far Cry Primal coverage here on Eurogamer. Goodbye. What, what? Start with the two that you've upgraded because they're actually worth taking. Ralph, Lars. So if you go to customize, if you thought about any names that you want to, people go for all sorts of different things. Sergeant Butts. Sergeant. No. Butts. So, but you know, you know, eventually he's going to get upgraded to sergeant, and then he's going to be sergeant, sergeant Butts. Butts. Yay! Yes, you're ruining this.